वेलकम बैक प्रॉब्लम 5.83 सो इज्यूमिंग द अपवर्ड रिएक्शन ऑफ ग्राउंड टू बी यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एंड नोइंग दैन अलाउेबल नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस ऑफ द स्टील इज 24 के एस आई सेलेक्ट द मोस्ट इकनॉमिकल वाइट लेंच बीम टू सपोर्ट द लोडिंग सो दिस इज द बीम ए डी यू कैन सी दैट इज सपोर्टेड ऑन ग्राउंड एंड दिस ग्राउंड एक्सर्ट आ यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लोड that is given in the question and the load at point b is 200 kips and at point c it is 200 kips the total length of the beam is 12 feet so you have to design uh, you have to select the most economical wide flange beam for the loading all the given data has been written and what we have to find is the most economical wide flange beam to support the loading so let's start with the solution as it is given that this low this uh, this uh, ground is exerting uniformly distributed load so if i replace this support and represent it with uniformly distributed load w and how we will know what is the value of w so you can see that there are two loads applied on that so this distributed reaction distributed reaction let this is w is equal to uh, these two forces addition of these two forces 200 plus 200 is 400 divided by total length of the beam so that will be give you 33. Point, 33.33 kips into kips per feet so this w is equal to 33.33 kips per feet now we have this distributed load we will move toward the shear forces so shear force so at point a va so at point a you can see the distributed load and this at point a x is equal to 0 so va will be equal to zero now what will be the shear force at vb negative now what does vb negative means vb negative means that you are approaching the b but not at exactly at point b so shear force at vb is equal to va which is equal to zero my plus this load this i will show you this load or the length of 4 feet so 4 into 4 into load is 33.33 kips since the load is upward so it is positive so when you solve this you will get vb negative is equal to 133.33 kips now what will be the shear force at point b again you can see that at point b there is a load of 200 kips and from here the load was 133.3 so 200 is downward and 133 is upward so it will be equal to 2 minus 200 minus 200 plus 133.33 kips and that will be equal to minus 66.7 kips now what will be the load at vb plus so vb plus means that you are taking the load from away from the point b moving away from the point b till point before the point c so it will be again this will be the same as vb because load from b to c will remain same as there is no load uh, except uh, this so it will be minus 66 point 67 kips now what will be the load vc negative so vc negative will be equal to vb plus which is which is minus 66 point 67 plus this load uh uh the remaining this load this load so this is a uh, four uh, not this 
but 4 into 33.3 this 4 distance into 33 because this have been calculated and this give you minus 6 so what about this load so 4 into 33.33 and when you solve this this will give you 66.67 kips now what will be the load at point c because you can see that here at point c you have this load as well which is 200 so vc is equal to minus 200 plus 66.67 and it will give you minus 133.3 kips and this will be the same load for vc plus so if vc plus means that a little bit away from point c okay what will be the load at point vd so vd is equal to vd will be equal to minus 133.3 till load at point c plus this load which is 33.33 into 4 so plus since the load is upward so 4 into 33.33 so when you solve this this will give you zero kips now we'll move toward the area so because from area okay let's plot the value as well so va is equal to zero so first point will be this one vb is exactly minus 66.6 v uh, va is this one va is equal to zero but VB negative is 133.3. So from A to B, this 133.3 point is here. So this is 133.3. And at point B, the load changes because we have a load of 200 kips as well. You can see here. So due to that load, the load changes from 133.33 to 66.6 .6. so let this point is minus 66.67 and then from vb away from vb it will be the same at vc negative it will be 66.6 .6. so again 66.6 .6 is 66.6 .6 plus 66.6 and at uh, vc you can see there is a load of 200 kips so 200 minus 200 plus this 66.6 .6 is again minus 133 which is this point minus 133.3 kips and at point d it will be zero if i join them so let me join it so this will be a a straight line clear and from b to c uh, okay at point b the load sudden change from 133 to minus 66.6 .6, and then from c to b to c it will be a straight line and again at point c the load change from 66.7 to minus 133 and then from c to d it will goes to zero so this will be your shear force diagram now we will move toward area why we are interested in area because from area you will get the bending moment so area a to b a to b so this is the area a from area as since this is rectangle so area is equal to 1 over 2 base into height square so base is this and height is this one and this height is 133 and this base is 4 feet so i will write area is equal to 1 over 2 base is 4 feet and height is 133.3 from here you will get the area is 266.67 kips into feet now area from b to c so from b to c b to c and we know that from area b to c is this one okay 
so we have another point here so let this point is e so i will correct it from b to e we have now two triangles one is this one and other is this one okay so uh, from b to e so b to e triangle will be equal to 1 over 2 its height is minus 66.67 and its high uh, width is 2 feet and that will give you minus 66.67 kips into feet so this is the height which is minus 66 and this is the width which is half of 4 which is 2 okay now the third triangle uh, triangle is e to c and again its base is two feet and height is 66.7 so from e to c e to c e to c it will be one over two and this will be the base is two and height is 66.67 and again this will give you plus 66.67 kips into feet okay now we left only one triangle that is this triangle and you know that base is four feet and height is 133 so i will write it from c to d and that is equal to 1 over 2 base is 4 feet and height is minus 133.3 feet and that will give you minus 266.67 kips into feet now we have this area we will use this area in order to find in order to draw the bending moment diagram so at moment bending moment so we'll change the color bending moment moment at point a will be equal to zero because at x is equal to zero moment will be zero clear so this is the point moment at point b is equal to moment at point a plus the area under this curve a area under curve this this is the area under the curve which is 266 so 266.67 since moment is 0 a, a, a is equal to 0 so 0 plus 266.67 will be 266.67 kips into okay so we will plot this 266.67 so again one is 50 200 2 so 250 is here so 255 266.6 266.67 kips will be this point now moment about point c which is equal to movement about point B plus the area under this triangle. Okay. So 266.67 plus area under the triangle B A B C B E. So B E is this one minus 66.67. So minus 66.67. When you solve this, you will get this 200 kips into feet so 200 will be this point at point e we have 200 so this is your 200 now moment what about moment at point e uh, sorry uh, this is the moment at point c not this is not at moment this is moment at point e okay so moment at point C is now equal to moment at point E which is 200 kips plus area under the shear force diagram this EC and this EC is 
six. So two hundred plus sixty six point six seven, and that will be two sixty six point six seven kips into feet. And again, C two sixty six is this point. Okay. Now movement about point D is equal to movement about point C, which is two sixty six point six seven plus this area under the shear force diagram from C to D, and you can see that this is minus two sixty six point six seven. So we will add them plus minus two sixty six point six seven, and that will give you zero. So it means your last point will be here. Now you have to join them in order to get the bending moment. So let me join that. So from A to B, you can see that shear force is one degree line from A to B. So bending moment will be the second degree curve and slope is increasing. So it will be counterclockwise moment. So your curve will be the like this. Now from B to E, you can see the shear force is again, the slope is upward. So it will be counterclockwise. So from B to E, this will be counterclockwise. Now from E to C, also the slope is increasing upward and this is positive. So it will be again, second degree curve. Now from C to D, you can see that slope is increasing. So again, this will be a counter clockwise second degree curve. So again, I have to join them very carefully. So this will be your bending moment diagram. Okay. So from here, you can see that maximum bending moment is 266 Kips 266.67 kips into feet. So we will note down this. So maximum bending moment is 266.67 kips into feet. And in term of inch, you have to multiply it with 12. So it will give you 3200 kips into inch. Okay. Also, we have sigma allowable in given data is 24 KSI. So you know that sigma allowable is equal to movement, bending movement divided by section modulus. So from here, we know that this is, will be your minimum section modulus and that will be bending movement divided by allowable bending stress. So you can put the value moment is 263, 3200 kips into inch and allowable stress is 24 KSI. So your minimum section modulus comes out to be 133.3 cubic inch. Now based on this, uh, minimum section modulus you have to go to the section property of the uh, of the uh, beams and you have to choose the shapes so i have written i will also show you these are the shapes and these are s inch cube so what i have chosen 20 w27 by 84 w24 by 68 W21 by 101, W18 by 76, W16 by 77, and W14 by 145. And their section modulus are 213, 154, 227, 146, 134 and 232 but we need minimum 133.3 so you have to choose the closest one you can see the closest one is 134 but this is w 
16 by 77 that another one is this one so this is the first closest is this one second closest is 1 w18 by 76 and the third closest one is w24 by 68 now what if you want to go safer you can choose any of this but we have to choose the um, beam that can support this load and having the lightest weight so you can see this w the second term is the weight per uh, cage weight per feet i think this is weight per feet so this has the 68 has 68 kg per feet it is also satisfying the minimum section modulus and the weight of the structure is also a less one so you have to choose w24 by 68 so you have to choose this w24 by 68 i hope you have enjoyed this video and let me if the book is open so we will share you let's go to the property table at the end of this book property role so you can see that the here you see w followed by nominal depth in inches and weight in pound per feet so this is weight uh, this is depth in inches and this value is pound per feet so what was our uh, selected beam that was 24 by 68 so 24 by 68 means that it has 68 pound per feet okay so let's move back to the problem so this is uh, not kg this is feet uh, uh, pounds so 68 pound per feet is the minimum weight so why th that's why we choose this w24 by 68 i hope you have enjoyed this problem and again if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching